year had this not uh, transpired. And then both teams coming in tonight reeling. The Hounds have lost two straight. Meanwhile, the Chieftains have suffered four straight losses. So one streak will end tonight. Interestingly enough, they find themselves at the bottom of the barrel defensively, both teams. Assumption's 10th in the league, uh, Stonehill is 9th. Both coaches today said the team that'll win the game is the team that learns to play defense for 40 minutes. Always one of the greatest rivalries in the NE10, Assumption and Stonehill. We'll be back with the tip-off right after this. My life has changed forever. Will I never have to worry? No! Will I have the freedom to do, to go, to be whatever I want? Will I ever be a size 10? What do we expect from our HMO? The perfect life? All we really want is a promise, to let our doctor do her job. And if anyone in our family gets sick, make sure we can go to the best doctors and hospitals. Nobody delivers on that promise like family, with benefits that redefine health care. Yeah. Then there's Fallon's Peace of Mind program. It lets you self-refer to some of the world's most famous hospitals and specialists. No gatekeepers. Will my smile light the sky? Will I be around to see my great-grandchildren? Ask your employer about all the benefits only Fallon offers. <laughs> or call them. Hi, I'm Lionel Lamro. It's hard to believe that we have been in business for a little over 20 years. During those years, Lamro Ford has built the reputation of providing our customers a different car shopping experience. No pressure and no gimmicks. From our showroom to our parts department to our award-winning service department, we believe in complete customer satisfaction. Our only goal is to satisfy the customer. For a totally different car shopping experience, take advantage of our experience. Lamro Ford, Route 9, East Brookfield, where friends send their friends. Welcome back, everyone. Here is a look at our starting lineups for tonight. Andy Nidzwicki will be your point guard. Casey Carney is the two. Adam Petkus will be the center. Brian Moore and Drew Cooper rounding out the starting lineup for Assumption. For the Chieftains of Stonehill, Jude Finksler, Jermaine Mitchell, Justin Loverm, Ola Franzen from Sweden, and David Donnelly, who we mentioned, leading the league in scoring and third in rebounding. Donnelly, a pretty special player. Uh, uh, interesting to note, though, that uh, Adam Petkus had a great game in the uh, opening game against Stonehill down at Stonehill, had 16 points and 14 rebounds. In a game that Assumption won 94-85, and certainly Donnelly and Drew Cooper are no strangers to one another. They were roommates this summer playing on a traveling all-star team in Europe. The tip is controlled by the Chieftains. This is Jude Finksler. Assumption starts in basic man-to-man -man defense. Chieftains going with one guard and four big men to start the game. Donnelly's first shot is good. Donnelly plays very well with his back to the basket, but obviously he can face up, and uh, it, for a big guy, he's pretty adept uh, from three-point land. Donnelly averaging 23 points a game. As I mentioned, that leads the league. Brian Moore down low, attacking, and that is his patented move. And we have a little taste of what the game's going to be about. Uh, Donnelly uh, facing up, more with his back to the basket for Assumption. This is Donnelly and now Fengsler. A very tall lineup for the Stonehill Chieftains. Fengsler trying to break down Nidzwicki, can't do it. Gets it off to Franzen. Now to Mitchell. Mitchell driving the lane, and we're going to have a charge. And it is Drew Cooper who steps in to take the charge. Drew Cooper did a nice job from uh, the weak side, stepped into the lane, had perfect position. Cooper and Moore, very adept at stepping in and taking the charges, so Mitchell will pick up his first foul and our first foul of the game. Nitzwicki to Carney. Carney still trying to get off his season-long scoring schneid. He had one game where he hit for 30 in the tournament in Pennsylvania, but since then has been relatively quiet. 
had a reasonably uh, good game in that uh, first outing down at Stonehill. He had double figures, but shot four for 12 from the floor. Carney comes in averaging 12 points a game. Third best on the Greyhound squad. Off the inbounds play, it is now Carney to Nidzwicki in the corner. Nidzwicki for three, buries it. Interestingly, uh, both coaches agreed that the uh, fact, major factor in the ball game might be the matchup of Finksler versus Nidzwicki. Franzen with the ball up top. The captain, Andy Nidzwicki, has given Assumption their first lead of the ball game, 5-2. This is Finksler. Donnelly looking to get a pick for him, and terrific defense by Nidzwicki. First two minutes, advantage Nidzwicki. Second turnover of the ball game for the Chieftains. Stonehill uh, formerly liked to uh, press full court, but they've been injury plagued all year, and uh, as a result, personnel-wise, demands that they play a half-court man-to-man defense. And you got to wonder what kind of a wear and tear toll that would take on Donnelly who was originally listed at 6'7", 235, but as we mentioned, has lost a lot of weight due to the illness. Brian Moore for three. Front rim won't go. Petkus tips the rebound out of bounds as Carney went diving after it. Assumption seems to be getting their shots. Neither team pressing. Both teams playing fallback man-to-man -man defense, trying to make sure there's help and uh, have to be beaten over the top. Franzen. Guarded by Carney. Franzen has the height advantage. This is Finksler. Franzen going inside. And the hoop plus one for the freshman, Malam Abdallah. Petkus got ball, called ball inside. Foul. Uh, Adam Petkus definitely makes the foul, hits him in the elbow, kisses it in off the glass, makes a three point play. Dalla coming off a very strong performance at Bentley. He had 24 points to go along with 10 boards in a losing effort. Now it is picked off by Donnelly. Donnelly will push. He had numbers and the double dribble, third turnover for the Chieftains. That's a pass that Nizwicki would like back, and uh, Donnelly has to learn to give up the ball. He doesn't want to be caught in a dribbling situation, so that's his hat. David Donnelly, three times, has been named the NE10 Player of the Week this year. Five all games, 17-07 remaining in the first half. Nizwicki guarded by Finksler. Now Abdallah comes out to help, and Brian Moore can't handle the pass. On a situation such as that, Nizwicki probably gets the uh, turnover in the stats, but in fairness to him, that uh, turnover was caused by Moore not grabbing a ball with two hands. This is Donnelly guarded by Moore. Quick move, Donnelly, to the very first, very quick first step for a big guy. Now the three is knocked down by Finkler, so he is in the books with a three-pointer, and Stonehill has the lead back 8-5. And it's interesting to note that Finksler did have 24 points versus the Hounds in that first ball game. He averages 12 a game. Petkus doubled, gets it to Cooper. Cooper's first shot of the ball game, and he gets the friendly roll. Cooper with a double dip and gets the shooter's roll, as you say. Three-pointer off the mark by Loverm and picked up by Petkus. Drew Cooper second in the lead in scoring. Cooper getting another quick two, and he now has four. That's a tough matchup for Justin Loverm trying to uh, play uh, Drew Cooper one-on-one. -on -one. Coops went by him on a baseline like he wasn't there. So in the mini matchup within the game, Cooper has four points, Donnelly has two, and Brian Moore has a steal. And he looks ahead to Casey Carney. And Carney tracks it down and does well just to hold on to the ball. Now Nidzwicki. Cooper calling for the ball. They try to go inside. A little miscommunication between Moore and Petkus as Moore was rolling. Petkus rather was moving across the lane. So we will step aside with 15.34 remaining in the first half. Stonehill in front by one. Here's the lineup for your T5 Ford dealers. The best place to buy your next Ford car or truck. 
from Worcester County, Lionel Lamoureux, Lamoureux Ford. From Metro West, David Avancis, Acton Ford. From Essex County, Ann Regan, Regan Ford. From Greater Boston, Fraser Lindley, Sentry Ford. And from the South Shore, Ken Fosnick, Shire Town Ford. Visit the Team 5 Ford dealer nearest you today, because in Eastern Massachusetts, we got you covered! Assumption Greyhound Basketball on WGMC TV3 is brought to you by Fallon Healthcare System and Lamoureux Ford in East Brookfield. Quick look at the series history. It is the 76th meeting between the Chieftains and Greyhounds. The Hounds lead it 43 to 32. And earlier this year, as we mentioned, Assumption beat Stonehill at Stonehill, 94-85, and Drew Cooper poured in 27 points. And first five minutes of this ball game been a little bit sloppy there. Turnovers on the uh, part of both teams, but we really can't uh, credit the uh, defense necessarily. Just been poor ball handling. Assumption with three turnovers, Stonehill with four. Ball all the way to the basket for Finksler. Attempt at a step in. Looks like the basket's good, and Carney's gonna be caught for the step-in foul. Casey Carney looking to pick up the charge. Officials ruling he was moving, so he picks up the blocking foul, and Finksler looking to complete the three-point play. Finksler already had a three-pointer from uh, beyond the perimeter, and now has the option to make a traditional three-pointer. And he goes in and out, the rebound by Abdallah. Abdallah drawing the contact with Moore, goes up and front rims it. So now Stonehill has a one point lead at 10-9 and Abdallah has a block on Cooper. Cooper goes back out to Nidswicki. Hounds off the penetration by Carney, trying to kick it inside and Donnelly got a hand on it, there was no one there. Moore probably trying to force it a little bit too much on those last two possessions. Right idea, trying to get it inside to Adam Petkus or to Drew Cooper, but in neither situation is there an opening. Nidzwicki will inbound it. They get it to Coop. Coop drawing the foul on Donnelly. And as is Assumption's tendency, they really execute their out-of-bounds plays under the basket extremely well. And there's Wiki with the uh, ball inbounds, Cooper with the cut wide open. Donnelly comes over to help, draws the foul. So Drew Cooper, a 73% free throw shooter. And he misses the first one. Brad Mancini checking in for Casey Carney. Sophomore Mancini averaging five points a game to go along with three rebounds. Second on the team in assists with 61. Cooper misses them both. Rebound by Petkus. Adam Petkus with the putback. Adam Petkus, nice job on the offensive board. And as mentioned earlier, he had a good ball game in that uh, opening game of the conference down at Stonehill. Three pointer for Franzen. Olaf Franzen. All the way from Sweden. International three-pointer. And that gives Stonehill a two-point lead. Cooper from three, well beyond the arc, and he's all net. Drew Cooper has been shooting the ball very well in the early going. Drew Cooper from Louisville. <laughs> shot it from Louisville. <laughs> he saw the Swedish shot and called him with one from Louisville. Mark Fai is in the game now, number 11 for the Chieftains. He leads the team in assists with 61 this season. And Franzen getting it inside to Abdallah. Abdallah had it ripped away by Nidzwicki. Nidzwicki, one of the leaders in the Northeast 10 on steals, averages almost two and a half a game. Cooper working on Donnelly, gets in the air and gets two. Drew Cooper taking it right at his former roommate from this summer. Another three-pointer for Franz, and this one misses wildly, and Cooper has the rebound. Hounds have a three-point lead. Nice look inside, rebound by Moore. Moore's blocked by Abdallah. Abdallah has two rejections early on. Abdallah's a nice-looking freshman. Nice look on the original pass from Nidzwicki to Cooper, and then Brian Moore had the rebound, and Moore with another one. Sort of a great replay, Cooper pass. from Nidzwicki before, and now Mancini to Moore on a great back door. Good cut, nice cut without the ball, and perfect delivery by Brad Mancini. 
And now Baia will run the show for the Chieftains. Steal by Moore. Moore. Drawing contact, kicks it out to Mancini. Mancini skip pass, now they go inside to Petkus. And Petkus draws the foul as Abdallah was trying to push off. Moore might have got away with a little bit of a charge there, but he did uh, stop his momentum. This is the uh, last trip down the court for Assumption. Here we have the Mancini back door. Watch uh, Brian Moore make a nice cut on the back uh, side. Mancini finds him, makes a scoring pass, a bounce pass. Casey Carney, Brant Calver checking into the game. Calver's first shot won't go, and Chris Kassain, the walk-on sophomore, is in there as well for the Hounds now. Baia, and we're going to have a foul as Greg Dempsey moved in to put up the jumper. And Mark Baia leads the uh, Stonehill Chieftains in assists and is probably their best point guard, but he's coming off the bench now. But there's a perfect example of his ball handling ability. Finds uh, Dempsey on a weak side. Dempsey shooting two, makes the first. Dempsey, an 82% free throw shooter. Stonehill it's one of those has a rarities. Shoots very well. Excuse me, one of those rarities for Stonehill. All their big guys are good foul shooters. Dempsey's a good foul shooter. Laverne's a good foul shooter. Donnelly's a good foul shooter. Donnelly actually leads the league in free throw percentage with 89.6. And here is Dave DeCiantis in his fourth season at the helm for the Chieftains. And this is the defense that Coach DeSantis likes to uh, play. They come out full court, man to man pressure. Mancini, another great look inside, and Calver's shot is rejected by Loverm. And Kassane scrambles for the loose ball. Did he call timeout? Calvert's been playing pretty well lately, but he's had uh, two wide open opportunities for layups, hasn't been able to uh, find iron. Assumption did get the timeout, as you said. Loverm holding his shin. He got tangled up with Kassane down low. And he'll get some attention over on the sideline. May have, uh, may have rolled the ankle. We'll get a second look at it right here. The battle underneath. They have the Mancini look to Calvert. Calvert wide open. The uh, ensuing Kassane going after the ball. And that's probably, yep, there's exactly where he Gets twisted up. Might have been knee or shin. Calvert had a part of his, uh, or Kassane had a part of his leg. Loverm walking off under his own power, the 6'8", 190-pound sophomore. There's Serge DeBerry in his fourth season at the helm for Assumption. Rebounds right now. Assumption has a 7-5 rebounding edge. Assumption did out-rebound them uh, slightly in the uh, first encounter earlier in the year. Brent Calver called for the offensive foul underneath. Assumption extends its defense a little bit out to midcourt. Stonehill looking to cut into the three-point Assumption advantage. Finksler gives it off now for James McDonald. So both teams going to the bench. Loverm for three. Front rim won't go. Rebound by Carney. Carney to Kassane. Carney trying to work the give and go with Chris Kassane, and it was out of bounds. So it will be a turnover, and when we return, it will be Stonehill basketball. The Chieftains trail it by three. My life has changed forever. Will I never have to worry? Will I have the freedom to do, to go, to be whatever I want? Will I ever be a size 10? What do we expect from our HMO? The perfect life? All we really want is a promise, to let our doctor do her job. And if anyone in our family gets sick, make sure we can go to the best doctors and hospitals. Nobody delivers on that promise like Fallon, with benefits that redefine health care. Then there's Fallon's Peace of Mind program. It lets you self-refer to some of the world's most famous hospitals and specialists. No gatekeepers. Will my smile like the sky? Will I be around to see my great-grandchildren? Ask your employer about all the benefits only Fallon offers. <laughs> or call Fallon. 
Looking at the any 10 scoring leaders, you see Donnelly leading the league. Drew Cooper is second, Moore is fifth, and Joe Ingenieri is third. Actually, uh, Assumption leads 18-15 here. Both teams are shooting it fairly well from the floor. Assumption 8 for 14, 57%, and Stonehill 5 for 10, 50%. Assumption foul, 34, Casey Carney. Carney's Carney picking up his second personal foul of the ball game. Finksler again tries to go one-on-one, -on -one, takes Carney to the basket, draws the foul. Loverne will inbounds to Finksler. Finksler goes up, and Brad Mancini got him on the arm. And just as Assumption had handled its out-of-bounds play under the basket extremely well, Stonehill ran its well there. Got Finksler wide open for a layup. Mancini had no choice but to uh, make the foul. So Finksler will go to the line shooting two. He has five points in tonight's contest. Last meeting between these two teams, he had 24 points. And he misses the first free throw attempt. Already in the game, we have had seven lead changes and two ties. So we have seen up and down action through the first eight and a half minutes. Finksler hits one of two free throws. Assumption leads by two. Stonehill turning up the pressure on defense. Kassane with the ball right now. Over to Carney and Mancini. Assumption going with a smaller lineup right now. With Calver as a forward. Calver underneath gets three or four purple jerseys in the air and converts. Nice head fakes uh, by Calver. He's one for three on layups now. Six Actually, foot four forward. Assumption going with Mancini at the uh, point position now. And the second that they did that, Stonehill went full court pressure, trying to put a little bit of man to man full court pressure on the Hounds. And the ball is Calver. Trying to steal it as it was dribbled off of the foot of Finksler. And we got about six bodies on the floor. Four of them from Assumption. And we'll get looks a second like, look at it right here. Looks like we're, uh, Calvert uh, causes it with great hustle. Six people on the floor, two Stonehill people. No one had real possession. I think we're going to go to the arrow. A little like a fumble in football. Yeah. Everyone Rugby trying to get scrum, into the air. a football fumble. And we have now gone four minutes since Stonehill has hit a field goal. So a bit of a drought from the floor for the Chieftains. Well, part of that is they went to the bench, didn't get real help from the bench, and uh, Donnelly obviously is going to need some uh, time on the pine. Uh, having lost, as we mentioned uh, early in the game, 20 pounds in the uh, last uh, month or so. He did see about uh, 25 minutes of action in Stonehill's last game against St. A's, but he was less than himself with six points. Great look by Drew Cooper to Calver. Over the head uh, pass by Drew Cooper. Great look, good delivery, nice cut by Calver. Calver makes the layup. Cooper looked like he'd been watching the Larry Bird video. Great anticipation. He knew where his man was and just blindly fired right over his head. Calvert running the court extremely well. Mancini, nice look. Delivered it perfectly. Finksler with the ball now. Jude has eight points here in the early going to the first half. Kassane trying to steal it. And Loverne's shot is off the mark, and it was last touched by Chris Kassane, so it will be Stonehill basketball. Brent Calver seems to turn his game up when he's on Channel 3. He averages 3.6 points a game, but he's already got six tonight, and every time we've seen him, he's been instant offense. The last ball game that we had them, he had an exceptional game, had six points. Same out-of-bounds play by Stonehill. It worked it effectively, but Loverne forgot to come in bounds. So with the turnover, the Hound, eighth of the ball game for Hounds Stonehill. Hounds had a lucky break there, actually. Stonehill had a layup opportunity. Assumption in front by six. 9.37 remaining here in the first half of play. Brent Calver setting the pick on Loverm. Casey Carney pull up, front rim won't go. Abdallah with the rebound. 
Abdallah from Boston Tech in Brockton, Massachusetts. 6'5", 205 pound freshman forward. Here is Abdallah to the hole. And we're gonna get a foul before the shot. And Kassane will pick up his second personal foul. Abdallah fairly quick for a big guy. He's able to take it to the uh, baseline extremely well here. Beats, uh, I think it's Calvert on the baseline. No, it's Kassane that he beats. Calvert winds up getting the step-in foul. So Abdallah will be shooting the one and one, and he knocks down the first one. Good to see now, though, with the uh, school back in, in session, the student section beginning to become a lot more prominent here. The Hound Pound will have some people in it. Abdallah knocks them both down, so it is a four-point assumption lead, 24-20. And James McDonald checking into the game now for Stonehill. Stonehill with a smaller lineup and two true guards. Brian Moore back in the game for assumption. Moore taking Loverm off the dribble, trying to kick it out to Cooper. Now to Nidzwicki for three, and he burying his second three-point attempt of the game. Nice swing of the ball by Drew Cooper to Andy Nizwicki on the weak side for the wide open three. Cooper has been exceptional in his passing here in the early going. And Abdallah's going to get an over the back call as Coop had the rebound. His Drew second. Cooper's a rebounder. He's an assist man. He's doing it all tonight. Here's Coop finding Nidzwick. Here we have uh, Coop swinging the ball to the weak side. Andy Nidzwicki, as we mentioned, wide open for the three, but he's able to bury it. Drew Cooper getting himself. Defensive rebound, assist, field goal. Cooper does it all. And now DeSantis wants a timeout. He is seeing his team right now go into a bit of a shell and be run by assumption. The Hounds in front by 9, 29-20. And once uh, Stonehill went to the bench and had to take Donnelly out, the uh, lid went on the rim. They haven't been able to buy a field goal since that. And uh, when Assumption's gone to the bench, Calvert did the uh, good job. Mancini did the good job. It's probably the difference in the ball game so far. And just a reminder, join us this Saturday for a doubleheader as the Bentley Falcons will invade the Hound Pound. We will have the women's game coming to you live at 1.30 with the men's game live at 4.30. Women's game is actually at one. And now, Franzen won't go from three. Cooper getting to the floor for the loose ball. Gets it up to, to uh, Nidwicki. Cooper taking Donnelly off the dribble. Drew Cooper right now is hitting everything he throws at the basket. Went strong left, uh, shot with the strong hand right off the glass and made it. Assumption right now shooting 62% from the floor. And they almost come up with another steal. Adam Petkus going to the front row for it. Good defensive help by Adam Petkus there. He just wasn't able to control the ball. Nice run by Assumption to lead 31-20. So it will be Stonehill basketball when we return. And the Hounds in front by 11. Hi, I'm Lionel Lamro. It's hard to believe that we have been in business for a little over 20 years. During those years, Lamro Ford has built a reputation of providing our customers a different car shopping experience. No pressure and no gimmicks. From our showroom to our parts department to our award-winning service department, we believe in complete customer satisfaction. Our only goal is to satisfy the customer. For a totally different car shopping experience, take advantage of our experience. Lamro Ford, Route 9, East Brookfield, where friends send their friends. At the conclusion of today's game, Joe and I will select the Flagship Bank player of the game. Flagship Bank will make a donation of $100 in that player's name to the Assumption College General Scholarship Fund. We always talk about Drew Cooper with his back to the basket, but here he is facing, goes strong left, shoots with the right hand off the glass, and grabs two points. And the Hounds right now on a 20-7 run that started at the 14-37 mark here in the first half. There is no one on the Stonehill roster that can play Drew Cooper one-on-one. -on -one. And now, Loverm guarded by Cooper. 
Finksler is in the game. He has been a big part of the Stonehill offense thus far. Franzen knocks down the jumper. Nizwicki trying to help on Finksler. Uh, allowed his man open and uh, he buries the deuce. Olaf Franzen with five points in the game. He only averages one point a contest. So he is well above his season average. Brian Moore is off the mark. And now Stonehill will push. Abdallah, turn around. Fans wanted a traveling call. Cooper with the rebound. Nidzwicki getting instructions from the bench. And calling out the plays. Drew Cooper. They're trying to swing it around the arc. Three hounds out there. And Coop takes the three, won't go. Battle between Moore and Loverm for the loose ball. And the officials say it was last touched by Justin Loverm. Ryan Moore, as usual, hustle. The firm just touched the ball. Here we see it. Uh, both of them going after it hard. Moore has a chance at it, but the ball is off blue. Assumption ball out of bounds. Hounds continuing to whip it around the perimeter, looking for the three-pointer. That time they had four players out beyond the arc. Casey Carney's three won't go. Down the other end, Franzen won't get the three. Abdullah with the rebound. Abdallah. And that won't go, and Nidzwicki picks up the board. Casey Carney for three. Nails it. Three-point uh, contest right now. Casey makes his. Olaf Franzen has thrown two air balls the last uh, couple of threes that he's taken, although he made one earlier. The Hounds continuing to shoot the three and now enjoying their largest lead of the ball game, a 12-point adva advantage. Have to credit the uh, run by Drew Cooper and the assumption defense uh, holding Stonehill to 22 points over the first 14 minutes. You mentioned at the top of the show that defense would be a key to seeing which team will break their skid. And right now the assumption defense has been outdoing that of Stonehill's. Low Verm now with the basketball in trouble, goes inside to Abdallah. Abdallah gaining the separation and getting himself an easy two. Chris Kassane seeing a fair amount of minutes here in the first half, and Serge always tells you that he wants to find more time for this kid. Casey Carney's three won't go, tipped up by Moore and taken by Abdallah. Stonehill been playing zone for the last two minutes, been a little bit effective. And now Abdallah going over to Franzen. They also have Jermaine Mitchell back in the ball game. Mitchell going down low to battle with Petkus. Finksler looking to break Carney down. And nice job of defense by Petkus as he came on the trap. Nice hustle, Adam Petkus. Wound up knocking the uh, ball off of Franzen's uh, shin out of bounds. Sumption gets the ball at half court. Part of the effective assumption defense has been the fact that DeSantis has had to uh, put Donnelly on a bench quite often. And this up-tempo style or very aggressive defense that assumption throws at you can wear down opponents, even if you haven't lost 20 pounds in the last 10 days. And that time they got the better of Franzen. Stonehill again in a zone defense. Nice help from uh, Ala takes it from Moore. Ala gets it from Fengsler. And he is going to be fouled by Brian Moore on the reach-in. Moore will pick up his first foul. Here we have Allah taking Adam Petkus one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but I think the foul was called on Brian Moore. And Moore and Petkus will check out of the ball game. Drew Cooper checking in with Brant Calvin. Malam Abdallah shooting a one and one. He is a 70% free throw shooter. Abdallah was not any kind of a factor the first time, but uh, obviously DeSantis has had to go to the bench as a result of all of the injuries, and the freshman's a pretty good player. And Stonehill right now is seven of nine from the charity stripe. Meanwhile, the Hounds are 0 of two. Nidzwicki will bring it up. Stonehill in a 1-2-2 zone. 
Sumption's going to swing the ball, look for a three-point opportunity for Carney or for Niswicki. Chieftain's coming way out to guard Casey Carney. Now Assumption looking to go inside. Coop drawing the triple team, gets it to Calver. Grant Calver going up quickly. Grant Calvert uh, winds up making the deuce good cut, but great pass Drew Cooper. Low Verm with the stroke as he nets the three. Big guys from uh, Stonehill can shoot the foul shots and can shoot the three facing. Low Verm, the second leading scorer for the Chieftain team. Calvert blocked by Low Verm. And so with 335 remaining in the first half, our score assumption 36 and Stonehill 29. We'll be back with more right after this. My life has changed forever. Will I never have to worry? No! Will I have the freedom to do, to go, to be whatever I want? Will I ever be a size 10? What do we expect from our HMO? The perfect life? All we really want is a promise, to let our doctor do her job. And if anyone in our family gets sick, make sure we can go to the best doctors and hospitals. Nobody delivers on that promise like family, with benefits that redefine health care. Then there's Fallon's Peace of Mind program. It lets you self-refer to some of the world's most famous hospitals and specialists. No gatekeepers. Will my smile light the sky? Will I be around to see my great-grandchildren? Ask your employer about all the benefits only Fallon offers. <laughs> or call Fallon. We're back, and just a reminder, coming up at halftime, we will have a conversation with that man on your left, Attleboro native Brian Moore, as well as all your first-half statistics and highlights. Casey Carney with the shot clock winding down. Off the rim. Finksler for three. He's got it. Jude Finksler picking up the scoring punch. And as we mentioned earlier, when uh, Stonehill went zone, it's been uh, fairly effective. Grant Calver stopping a 10-2 Stonehill run. Sumption leads 38-32, and the difference in the ballgame right now has to be the uh, performance of Calvert coming in off the bench. Calvert absolutely loves the TV games. He already has 10 points here in the first half. He averages three and a half. Every time we've seen him, he's lit the scoreboard up. He's going to ask us to go on the road with him. Finksler now taking Carney, trapped in the corner, trapped in the baseline. And travel with the basketball, and credit Grant Calver for coming over with the help defense. And Carney creating and Calvert, turnover. nice job. Finksler winds up called for the uh, travel here. Nice double team here. He tries to get out of uh, the double team here, moves his pivot foot. Good call by the officials. Brad Mancini in the game for Assumption. Nidzwicki calling out the plays. Hounds in front by six. 2.15 remaining in the first half. Cooper eyed up the three, then hit Nidzwicki. Nidzwicki misses his first three of the ball game. He had been two for two. And a foul underneath on Stoner. By a, By a picking up his first personal foul. He's caught in a tough mismatch. He had uh, Brent Calvert one-on-one. -on -one. Inside to Cooper, beautiful block by Mitchell. That's the fourth or fifth block that the Stonehill team has had tonight. And it's been three different players who have got in on the act. This is Donnelly now, who faced up a little bit earlier, but now playing with his back to the basket here. Here we have the uh, nice block by, uh, was it Dempsey, I think? No, it was uh, Jermaine Mitchell made that block. Dempsey knocking down his first free throw attempt. As we mentioned now, uh, Donnelly, the uh, leading foul shooter in the conference. And you can see why Donnelly knocks them both down. Nothing but nylon. Rebounds right now, 15 apiece. 
Hounds in front by four. They had a double-digit lead not too long ago, but Stonehill has clawed their way back into the ballgame. And literally, it's been uh, the result of Stonehill going uh, zone defense has been very, very effective. And that's what uh, Assumption was working on, I know, is in practice this week. Ways to break down the zone. With five seconds left, Moore has to take the three. Not the shot they wanted, I don't think. It was a hurried three. Won't go. Stonehill down the other end. Finksler with the three. Good look, and he nails it. Stonehill will take that trade anytime. Finksler from three-point land versus Moore from three-point land. Finksler has 14 points already in the ball game, including three three-pointers. Mitchell going for the rebound with Calver. Finksler trying to throw the oop for Donnelly. And Donnelly was pushed by Nidswicki. Good idea by Finksler to uh, take the alley-oop uh, lob to uh, Donnelly, but Nizwicki wound up going under him a little bit. Nice lob pass. Nizwicki gets a call for going underneath. Stonehill right now on a 15-4 run. Donnelly... A rare miss from the line. We often do, the kiss of death on the outstanding foul shooter. Every time you mention it, someone comes up with a miss. But again, you can't uh, uh, mention too many times the uh, turnaround in the ball game came about as a result of Stonehill going uh, zone defense, and Assumption has not been able to get anything inside, and they haven't been able to bury the three. David Donnelly, the senior from Lakeville, Massachusetts, gets one of two free throws, and suddenly it is a brand new ball game. We are all tied up at 38 all with under a minute remaining here in the first half. What looked at one point to be a very comfortable lead for the Hounds has evaporated very quickly. And comfortable might be the right word. They may have gotten a little bit too comfortable uh, up 10. It doesn't seem as though they're playing with quite as much intensity over the last eight minutes. That combined with the fact that Stonehill's zone defense has been so effective. Brian Moore in the game for the Hounds. Always an intense player. Some tic-tac-toe passing, and Nidwicki ends up with the open three, won't get it to go, and Mancini comes down with a big rebound. Nice rebound, Brad Mancini. Nidwicki missed the three, but that was a shot that Coach DeBarry wanted. Sumpson's gonna take some time off the clock, look for the last shot here. They can hold for the final shot if they'd like to. Mancini, Cooper, or Nidwicki for a three is what I'm gonna tell you is gonna happen with about seven seconds to go. Stonehill stays back left. in its own defense. Nidwicki starts to run the O with 10 seconds left. And Stonehill looked to trap. Loverm cut back across and picked the ball off. And his shot from two steps over half court hits the top of the backboard. So we have played 20 minutes. And our score is Assumption 38 and Stonehill 38. We'll be back with more halftime activities right after this. Here's the lineup for your Team 5 Ford dealers. The best place to buy your next Ford car or truck. From Worcester County, Lionel Lamoureux, Lamoureux Ford. From Metro West, David Abatsis, Acton Ford. From Essex County, Ann Regan, Regan Ford. From Greater Boston, Fraser Lindley, Sentry Ford. And from the South Shore, Ken Fosnick, Shiretown Ford. Visit the Team 5 Ford dealer nearest you today. Because in Eastern Massachusetts, we got you covered. Welcome to a land of law, a place ruled by the dinosaur, where cactus-clad mountains spew lava and smoke, and craters hide inquisitive folk, where wise old turtles share their views on creatures with red vests and powder blue shoes. There's so much to Galapagos, so much we could say. It would be most preposterous if it all went away. What do you want to leave your children? The story or the place that inspired it? Since 1961, World Wildlife Fund has helped safeguard thousands of species like these. Animals which can be found nowhere else on Earth. But in areas like the Galapagos Islands, we need your help to do more. Phone us at 1-800-CALL-WWF to find out about World Wildlife Fund's Living Planet Campaign and about our free action kit, which includes information on what you can pledge to do. 
to help leave our children a living planet. Thousand disasters a year all come down to one single terrible moment for someone. Call now because help can't wait. Welcome back to halftime, everyone. Joining me now is junior forward Brian Moore. And Brian, uh, talk about uh, the season so far. You're a little over the midway point in the NE10 season. Uh, so far, I mean, we're, we're kind of struggling right now. We're 8 and 10, uh, probably 5 and 5 in the league. We, you know, we're just hovering at 500, but we're still, you know, we're still right in the middle of the pack in the NE10. Um, just have, we've been playing, uh, playing hard all season. We just haven't gotten the wins that we've, we've wanted, you know. Um, every team in this league is, is no, no one team in this team is better than the other. So when you come out every night, every night's going to be a, uh, a battle with the other team. And you, we might lose a four-point game here or a two-point game here. And those, you know, those losses, even though they're a loss column, you know, they could have been a win just as easily. Um, right now, we're, we're, we're kind of struggling as a team. We're searching, I think, kind of for our, our identity on the court. You know, um, we, about midway through the season, a couple games, you know, a couple weeks ago, we. <clears throat> Coach really wants us to focus on playing even harder, and we did that. And you know, you know, it, it, we really haven't shown the results, you know, yet. You know, we've been working hard in practice, we've been playing harder in practice, getting on the floor more in games, playing more. I mean, we came up with a good win against St. A's, and then we came back against Bentley and got our butts kicked. You know, so you, it's 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 true to the task that you got to come out every game with the same intensity. You know, if we came out with the same intensity we did against St. A's, we would have beat Bentley, or we would have stayed in the game. But it was just a lack of preparation on our part. Um, so it just goes to show that even though you prepare, you try to prepare as hard as you can, you have to play as hard as you were preparing. And, uh, but I mean, I mean, the season's not over yet. You know, I'm not, not going to throw it in the, you know, throw it in the bag, you know. Uh, we've got eight games left, and if we, you know, if we get hot, you know, like we did last year at the same point, then we can turn things around, you know. I'm not ready to, to bag it up, so. How frustrating is it when you have a game like you did against St. A's, a terrific win here, and then, like you said, you're, you're working very hard in practice, and everyone's talking about the key is the hard work, and you seem like you're doing all the work necessary, and then you go to a, a game like Bentley, and, and you get out on the short end of the stick, and you say, you know, we seem to be working just as hard in practice as we did for the St. A's game. We seem to be as geared up as we were for that game, but it was just a different game. Uh, it's tough. It's hard to take because you don't know what to think. You don't know... You don't know what you're doing wrong, you know, and it's like, you know, you're playing hard and you're practicing hard, but why I'm not showing the results. And, you know, coach, you know, says, you know, you can't make up for two years of not playing hard with two weeks and expect to get the same results. So that's that's kind of what we got to look at. Just keep, you know, keep plugging away and hopefully things will turn turn our way. How difficult is it to keep the intensity level high for every single game? All your games now remain in your any 10 games. And like you said, it's really, if you go on a run right now, you certainly could end up being the top team in the NE10 and, and more importantly, you know, is win the playoffs for the NE10 and that gives you the NCAA bid. But right now, even it's still anyone's league to win and, and certainly six, seven losses may, may be what takes to win this league, that the top team may have seven losses. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard sometimes because you know, maybe you came to play and you came prepared, but maybe some other guys didn't come to play or, you know, they're not going 100%, you know, myself, someone else, you never know. You know, if the whole team isn't involved in the preparation and, and the commitment, then you're not going to get what you want in the end, basically. As, as a leader of this team, and I think early on you guys were, were kind of feeling each other out as to who was going to be 
the leaders, and, and you, certainly you and Drew Cooper have stepped up and Andy Nidzwicki, to, it, in my eyes, certainly to be the leaders on the floor. Uh, what do you try to do to get the team motivated and to get things going in the right direction again? Just lead by example. Just lead by example in practice, you know, in the games. You know, you try to do your, you, you, you pull your end of the bargain, you know, at school, education-wise, you know, at school, you know, preparing for the games, out in the court, especially on, in practice, because that's what the younger guys are looking for, but especially the freshman guys and stuff like that. How about the freshman guys, too? You've gotten a lot more minutes now from, from guys like Mike Manning and Matt Brochu and even the sophomore walk-on Chris Kassain. Talk about their development this year. Um, they, they're fitting in well. I mean, uh, especially uh, uh, Matty, you know, he's getting some time. He's getting his minutes. He's just, I think, you know, he's a freshman. He's still a little weary, you know, probably, you know, he's not, you know, it's a big jump from high school to D2. And, uh, I mean, they fit Archie. I mean, well, Mike Manning, you know, yeah, we have a couple of nicknames for him. They fit right in. I mean, the first day they were here, I gave him a couple of nicknames and they've stuck ever since. Mike Manning is Archie. I don't, just because Archie Manning is uh, Peyton Manning's father, it just stuck in my head. and. We call Matt Brochu uh, Nip Nipper because he's from Nip Makai and, you know, we call him Johnny Nip. And so it's just something I don't even, I, if you told me to call him Mike, call Archie Mike, I would, see, I'm all confused now. I don't know who's Archie <laughs> and who's Nipper, but, uh, you know, they're pulling, their, they're pulling their weight in practice. They're learning, you know, they need confidence. And that's the biggest thing is that, is that they need to get some confidence on the floor and practice and, and they're, they're coming along, especially Chris Cassane's improved by leaps and bounds so far this year. You know, he's last year he was kind of the lost soul in the court, and he was the guy we all used to watch at practice because it was funny because he didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where to set a pick. Cooper used to make fun, you know, tell him to go one way on a screen on an out of bounds play, and he'd go the other, and it was it was it was quite comical at times. But uh, you know, he's you know he's stepping up and he's playing hard, and that's what we need is to look guys like that to be role players. And that's kind of been, if you, at least if you could point to one positive. Early in the season, midway through the season, it's been the, the young players kind of stepping into their roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Chris Cassane, um, uh, Matt's coming into play, you know, and uh, we just hopefully we'll get some better uh, production out of the out of the sophomores who played a lot last year. You know, Adams Adams a lot. Adams done better. He's done better, but we you know we need some more from Brad. We need some more from Casey. You know, I don't know. Maybe they fall to the sophomore jinx, whatever they call it. But I think it's I think that's all. You know, BS is just mental. It is just being ready to play. Things you have to fight through. Yeah. About a uh, couple couple games ago, uh, you flying into the into the crowd and uh, ripping the table off its moorings. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that. It was exciting from my end because it wasn't my end of the table yeah, that you hit. Yeah. Poor Joe O'Brien. I guess I owe him a pair of pants because uh, I didn't see that. I had a cord, had a monitor cord wrapped around my leg, and I and uh, I couldn't get it back in the game because it was wrapped around my leg, and I'm trying to kick it off and it won't come off. But uh. I was just going after the ball. I mean, and I had a straight route to the ball, but there was a ref, was an official there, so I had to go around him, and I, I kept it in place somehow. But I don't know. You guys just happened to be in the wrong place. That's <laughs> it was entertaining, yeah. anyway. Yeah, I got a nice little gouge in my rib cage from it too. But oh, sure, you got a gouge, and I think Joe got a nice white uh, paint streak on his suit pants. Oh, well, uh, that's a price you guys pay for being up close at prayer school with the basketball team. Exactly. Last question, Super Bowl this weekend, Falcons and the Broncos, who do you like? That's Broncos, no question. I mean, you gotta, you, you hope for John Elway, you hope he goes on on a bang, you know, all the best that, you know, Dan Reeves, everything he's gone through, but I mean, I just think uh, the Broncos are overwhelmed. I'd much rather would have saw a Vikings uh, Broncos game, but you know, you know, they won. You gotta give it to the Falcons, they're the, uh, the Cinderella team this year, but I don't know, you got to go with the Broncos in this. We'll go with that way. Brian, thanks for joining us. Good luck with the rest of the season. My guest at halftime has been junior forward Brian Moore. We'll be back with more halftime activities right after this. some pretzels? No, I'm about to trade you cookies for something. Like what? I don't know. I just want pretzels. But an orange. Forget it. Hey, Jay, you got anything? Don't ask Jay. Why not? Jay never has anything. Yeah, Jay never has anything. Jay, why don't you ever have anything? What's up with that? Are you in a gun or something? 
Jay's on a diet. <laughs> That's all right, man. We we understand. My mom's on a diet. Uh -huh. Have you seen my uh -huh. mom? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to a land of law, a place ruled by the dinosaur, where cactus-clad mountains spew lava and smoke, and craters hide inquisitive folk, where wise old turtles share their views on creatures with red vests and powder blue shoes. There's so much to Galapagos, so much we could say. It would be most preposterous if it all went away. What do you want to leave your children? The story or the place that inspired it? Since 1961, World Wildlife Fund has helped safeguard thousands of species like these. Animals which can be found nowhere else on Earth. But in areas like the Galapagos Islands, we need your help to do more. Phone us at 1-800-CALL-WWF to find out about World Wildlife Fund's Living Planet Campaign and about our free action kit, which includes information on what you can pledge to do to help leave our children a living planet. story of a place known as the Hidden City. The Hidden City is the biggest city on Earth, even though no people actually live there. But it's filled with the most magical animals in the world. Where is the Hidden City? To find it, you have to look in the land beneath the sea. The Hidden City is also known as the Coral Reef, and it may be the most important city in the world because more species live here than any other place on Earth. Unfortunately, pollution is harming the Coral Reef. Seventy percent of it will perish in our lifetime if we don't begin protecting it now, which won't just affect the clownfish, the grouper, or the eel. It'll affect us all because the reefs sustain the ocean and the oceans sustain the earth and some even think that hidden inside the hidden city may be new medicines and cures for disease the city may be hidden but the message is easy to see protect the coral reef and we protect the ocean protect the ocean We protect the Earth. Welcome back, everyone. Our score at the half. 38 all and really the story of the first half for assumption they shot very well from the floor 63 percent but they were only 27 percent from beyond the three-point arc and i think once stonehill went uh, zone defense uh the lid went on the basket for the greyhounds and they dissipated a 10-point uh, lead uh, if i were looking at the score 38 38 i'd expected it was an exciting ball game but the truth of the matter is it's been a blah game neither team has distinguished itself the crowd's not in the game looking forward to a much better second half both teams sort of plodding along but we certainly have had some exciting moments among them Drew Cooper with a terrific look. Uh, this pass here, a blind pass uh, over the head, uh, you mentioned at the time, uh, a la Larry Bird. He's the only guy that could make that kind of a pass. And nice to see Calver get that basket. Uh, the two guys that distinguished themselves in the first half are Brant Calver for Assumption and, and Abdallah for Stonehill, two players off the bench. Malam Abdallah, just a freshman. He's coming off his career game against Bentley. He had 24 points and 10 rebounds. Right now he has nine points for the Chieftains, second on the team in scoring. He's kind of picked up the slack for Donnelly. He has, and he was virtually no factor in that first ball game that Assumption won down at uh, Stonehill. Here we have uh, Abdallah now making uh, a nice move uh, in the uh, lane, going against Petkus, takes him uh, with his back to the basket, takes a strong freshman looking like a good offensive player. 
and uh, one of the prime time players or one of the players who, who really didn't play a big part early in the season but's come on in our eyes has been Brant Calver. He's kind of the, the all GMC player and once the TV cameras are on he's a different player. For whatever reason uh, I look in the papers uh, when we're not doing the game and he has so-so stats but when we do the ball game on Channel 3 uh, Brant comes to play. Calver 10 points in the first half and he's the second leading scorer for the Hounds. Coop finding him in traffic. Here we have Cooper again uh, with a uh, great pass. Calvert winds up being the recipient of that. And comes up with the deuce. Cooper Jude. did it all in that uh, particular five minutes. He had uh, assists. He had rebounds. He had baskets. And Cooper's really going to have to pick the slack up a little bit more. For Brian Moore, kind of an off night so far, shooting and, and even rebounding. And I think anytime a team goes zone and uh, takes the paint away from the Greyhounds, that cuts into uh, Moore's efficiency, and he hasn't been able to bury the three. He's had a couple of wide open looks. Jude Finksler for Stonehill lit up the Hounds for 24 points in their first meeting. He already has... 14 here in the first half. And here the Hounds had just missed a wide open three. Uh, Stone hook him down the fast break. Finksler gets a wide open look and he buries it. Not even a problem. Finkster and Abdallah have really picked up the slack for Donnelly. He only has five points in the first half. Quick look at our stats. Field goal percentages. Assumption in front. Look at the free throw percentage though. 79% for Stonehill. And assumption 0 for 2 from the line. One of the rare times that we've watched the Hounds in 20 minutes of basketball where the other team has dominated going to the foul line. Stonehill went to the foul line 14 times. I think the Greyhounds only had two shots from the charity stripe. And to start the second half of play, it is Stonehill basketball. So the Chieftains looking to take the lead. Loverne, pull up jumper, gets it. And Stonehill has a lead. Firm, nice uh, head fake, got Cooper off his feet, uh, took the one bounce, and had the wide open 20-footer. So now it is assumption playing catch-up basketball, something they didn't do since the first minute of play in the game. Nidzwicki's shot won't go. Rebound by Laverne. He pushes for Finksler. Stonehill has numbers. Pull up, no good by Franzen. Rebound, no good by Donnelly. Moore goes to the basketball, or the floor rather, and gets it right up into the hands of Loverm, who is fouled as he followed his own shot. Moore made the uh, nice hustle play, but when you save it under the uh, opponent's basket, it's difficult to throw it back in. Loverm winds up with the ball. Here's Brian making a great hustle play, but he puts it right in the hands of Loverm. Looked like he had a layup, missed it, wasn't able to bury it. And the tip, we have over the back foul. Staying right with it, and it was Adam Petkus who picked up the foul. So Loverm knocks down his first free throw attempt. He is shooting at 74% from the line. And again, the kiss of death as he hits <laughs> one of two. Loverm 6'8, but he Stonehill only goes continues to, to play its zone defense. Stonehill last led at the 15-29 mark of the first half. They have the lead now, but Adam Petkus comes back with two. Nice swing of the ball by Assumption. Ball inside to the paint for Adam Petkus for the uh, open 10-footer. And now Petkus battles for the loose ball and gets it to Nidzwicki. Nidzwicki pushes to Moore. Two on two, Moore and Cooper down there for Assumption. Coop gets Donnelly in the air, gets his own rebound, and goes up and is fouled. And this one could go on any number of players, and it will be on Loverne. Nice fast break opportunity by the Hounds. And Zwicky to uh, Moore to uh, Cooper. Cooper had the chance, tried to use the uh, rim here. Wasn't able to bury it, but continue to pursue the ball on the offensive rebound. Draws three guys. Any one of them could have been called for the foul. Coop knocks down the first free throw attempt. Sean Conrad on your right, Serge, Serge DeBarry. DeBarry. looks a little concerned. He doesn't seem to think that his team is playing with the kind of fire that he expected tonight. That was something that the Hounds had talked about, too, is intensity and hard work to turn around kind of the one step up, two step back well, season, the way the season's been going for them. Assumptions found itself mired in the middle of the league. Uh, in their heart, they think that they belong at the top of the league, but they have to go on some kind of a mission to make that happen. We don't see that fire here yet tonight. Stonehill breaking the press. Bronzen won't go for three. Oh, it will go for three. Will go. 
almost hit the top but uh, that's more than a shooter's roll I don't know what you call that those aren't supposed to fall at the opponent's gym Casey Carney now the Hounds swinging it around the arc inside to Petkus Adam puts it on the floor quick ball movement by assumption Moore trying to hit Cooper and it was low and outside and again the uh, Stonehill uh, zone has befuddled the Greyhounds uh, going to have to be a little patient but uh, Ms. Wiki and uh, Carney are going to have to uh, find some open room. Assumption led by 12 at the 604 mark in the first half and now Brian Moore with the steal and he will be fouled on the play by Baia. Brian Moore nice alert uh, steal have Baia comes from behind and the official saw the reach in. A well-rounded player, Brian Moore, second in the league in rebounding, fifth in scoring, and fourth in steals. Cooper inside to Moore. Moore looks for Petkus. Nice look. Adam on the follow. And they're waving it off. And they're giving the foul to Adam Petkus, I believe. We're going to take a second look. But Petkus. Misses the uh, initial opportunity. Nice look here from uh, Brian Moore. There's a miss here. He goes after, pursues his own rebound. I didn't see the foul, but they called him for the foul. Looked like a potential three-pointer for the Greyhounds, but Coach Barry doesn't seem to be that concerned about it. 44-41 Stonehill. We have had eight lead changes and four ties, and now there's another steal by Moore. Moore with one man to meet. It's Baya. And he does beat him. Moore, nice steal, takes it all the way to the basket, shoots with the uh, offhand, then makes the deuce over Baya. Greyhounds within one. For Serge DeBerry and his staff, I'm sure that's exactly what they want to see is Moore come out and get involved in the offense right away, any way he can. And he's done it the last two times by creating the steals. Cooper picks up a foul. This is the uh, steal by Brian Moore. Baia is the only man back. Uh, Brian takes the ball under control, shoots with the offhand, and makes the layup. Down the other end, Finksler high off the glass. Gets it to go. Finksler's very good at taking the ball to the 10-foot uh, area and using the uh, glass for that little two-pointer. Casey Carney from well beyond the arc won't go. Rebound by Abdallah. Baia now. With Petkus coming up behind him, and another steal by Brian Moore. Moore has three in the first three minutes of the second half. Casey Carney won't go. Rebound tipped by Cooper. Cooper gets Abdallah in the air, and he will get the hoop plus one. Carney missed the uh, open 12-footer, but Cooper did a nice job of pursuing it on the offensive board. With Carney that'll pull be up. Abdallah's third. This Carney has about a 12, 15 footer wide open, isn't able to make it, but Cooper, great nose for the ball, pursues it. Nice head fake here now, gets two Stone Hill players off their feet, makes the basket, opportunity for three. Chance to tie the ball game. Probably more importantly, early on here in the second half is getting Abdallah his third personal foul. The Cooper. Greyhounds seem to be a little bit more alert defensively. They seem to be playing a little bit more intensely, more especially uh, with those two steals. Drew Cooper, the fourth all-time leading scorer in Assumption history, completing the three-point play. And there's a steal by Petkus. And I don't know if he meant to do that, but it was a terrific save to bounce it high over the heads of Stonehill players right to his own teammates. And he gets rewarded. Moore goes inside, and Adam nails the turnaround. Nice pass from uh, Brian Moore at the top of the key to uh, Adam in the uh, paint. Adam turns and makes a second 10-footer of this half. Greyhounds have the lead. Finksler, quick drive. And Nidzwicki is going to be called for the pushing foul. Thinks was cute with the ball. He's pretty quick, too. His first step is quick off the dribble. He's been able to uh, take just about anyone on assumption one on one from the top of the key. With 15 27 remaining in the game, we will take a break. You are watching Assumption Basketball on WGMC TV3. My life has changed forever. 
Will I never have to worry? Will I have the freedom to do, to go, to be whatever I want? Will I ever be a size 10? What do we expect from our HMO? The perfect life? All we really want is a promise to let our doctor do her job. And if anyone in our family gets sick, make sure we can go to the best doctors and hospitals. Nobody delivers on that promise like family with benefits that redefine health care. Then there's Fallon's Peace of Mind program. It lets you self-refer to some of the world's most famous hospitals and specialists. No gatekeepers. Will my smile like the sky? Will I be around to see my great-grandchildren? Ask your employer about all the benefits only Fallon offers. <laughs> or call Fallon. Assumption Greyhound Basketball on WGMC TV3 is brought to you by Fallon Healthcare System and Lamoureux Ford in East Brookfield. We're back and wasting no time in getting right into the action. Stonehill with two and three shots at the basket. None would fall. Nidzwicki for three. Won't go. Rebound chased down by Brian Moore to Cooper in the corner. Now Assumption will relax with the basketball. And ultimately the Stonehill uh, defense playing zone will be effective if someone's not able to make a three for Assumption. Cooper, Cooper tried for the three, didn't get it, and Petkus is going to be called for the over the back violation, and that's a killer as a coach. Cooper missed that wide open three, and as Ricky missed a wide open three, Carney hasn't been able to uh, find the net, and that's the reason that the Stonehill defense, his own defense, has been so effective. Assumption trying to come full court now, see if they can uh, get a little bit more intense. Finksler doing a nice job of breaking it. Getting over the timeline. Very quick off the crossover dribble. Yeah, he really does a nice job of that uh, with the ball. He, he's been able to take uh, Mancini and his wiki at will from the top of the key off the dribble. Jude Finksler. The follow was by Loverm, and he couldn't go. And now David Donnelly pushes it up, looking for Franzen. And too long and out of bounds. And again, the play a little bit sloppy at both ends. Uh, Mancini had the turnover trying to get the ball inside. Stonehill has the turnover trying to make the lob pass. Neither team winning any points in the artistic department. But I don't think any coaches want that now. They just want the win. Two point ball game. Brian Moore down low, using the left hand, won't go. Rebound by Abdallah. Finksler pushing it up. Now settles. Donnelly's back in the game. As is Abdallah and Franzen and Loverm for Stonehill. Nidzwicki, Mancini, Brochu, Moore, and Cooper for Assumption. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Donnelly down low to Loverm. Loverm too far, or too hard rather, and rebound by Brochu. Good defensive foray by the Greyhounds that particular time. Nice concentration for that 35 seconds. Now with Mancini and Brochu and Nidzwicki in the game, Assumption essentially with three guards. That's two beauties in a row that Brian Moore has taken with the left hand. Trying to draw the foul, wasn't able to uh, draw Stonehill into uh, the miscue. Stonehill continuing to pressure on the zone. Nidzwicki won't go from three. And the cold shooting for the Hounds from outside continues. Donnelly for three. Won't go. Abdallah with the rebound. Spinning inside. Goes up, has it knocked away. And it will remain Stonehill basketball. Brian Moore got a piece of it. And DeSantis calls for a 20-second timeout to talk things over with his chieftain squad. I'm not sure that DeSantis uh, wanted Donnelly to take that uh, deep three-pointer. I, I know that Coach DeBarry wanted Neswicki to take the three-pointer that he had. It's, it's a wide-open three. It's something that you have to do to be effective against the zone. Carney, uh, Neswicki, Mancini, Brochu. Someone has to bury the three. And this Saturday, we will have a double header 
for you from the Hound Pound. Bentley Falcons coming in. The women's game starts at 1, live on Channel 3 with the men's game following at 4 o'clock, live right here on Channel 3. The NE10 action continuing. The Hounds 5-5 five and five in league play, and the Chieftains coming in tonight 4-6 and six in the Northeast 10 Conference. Donnelly's the fine player, but Brian Moore matches up very well playing him man-to-man -man defensively. Donnelly for three, won't go. Abdallah got a hand on the rebound. It was knocked out of bounds, so it will be Assumption basketball. Mancini trying to push it up quickly. Stonehill settling into their defense. Now Franzen with a steal. And it was knocked away by Calver, but out of bounds. Moore, good luck trying to get it inside to Calver, but forced it again. Stonehill, nice job uh, in their clogging zone. Turns it over. Grant Calver seeing his first action of the second half. Mancini on Baia. High pick and roll for Stonehill. Assumption defended it fairly well. And Baia. Getting his signals crossed as he fires across. And out of bounds. So with 11.50 remaining in the game, an assumption in front by two, we will step aside and be back with more right after this. Here's the lineup for your Team 5 Ford dealers. The best place to buy your next Ford car or truck. From Worcester County, Lionel Lamoureux, Lamoureux Ford. From Metro West, David Abatsis, Acton Ford. From Essex County, Ann Regan, Regan Ford. From Greater Boston, Fraser Lindley, Sentry Ford. And from the South Shore, Ken Fosnick, Shire Town Ford. Visit the Team 5 Ford dealer nearest you today. Because in Eastern Massachusetts, we got you covered! I gotta tell you, I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. I played lacrosse and football in high school and lacrosse in college, so I think I know what the athletes are thinking out there. It's sports, man. You just, you gotta feel it. For the best in local and pro sports, Worcester County, stick around to Newswatch 3. We're back, everyone, and quick look at Assumption at the Alaska Gymnasium, 5-1 and one on the road, 2-7. and seven. And the lone loss here was the overtime thriller to Merrimack, actually three overtimes. And as you mentioned during the uh, timeout, Kevin, it's been four minutes since either team has scored a point. Assumption with a smaller lineup in there now. Three guards, Mancini shot, won't go. Stonehill will push. Finksler traveled with the basketball. And as is the case most of the time with the players, they don't buy it. Two-point assumption lead, 11.30 remaining in the contest. The scoring drought continuing for both squads. I'd like to credit it to great defense, but the truth is Stonehill has just clogged in the zone. Carney misses another, and Assumption has just played a collapsing man-to-man. -man. Neither team can bury one. The Verm shot won't go, tipped up and in by Donnelly. Donnelly, nice job on the offensive board with the left-hand tip. Another tie score. And really, Brian Moore is the only real scoring threat out there. Actually, Calver, because the game's on TV, is a scoring threat. And Moore goes inside and gets his two. It's where Brian has to try to hurt the zone, along the baseline and in the uh, paint, rather than shooting it over the top. Abdallah in the lane, turn around, won't go. Rebound by Calver. Assumption can extend their lead. It is two right now. Moore for three. Nails it. Just as I said, he should do it in the paint. He does it from three-point land. But I'm sure Coach DeBarry will take that one. Gives the Hounds a five-point lead. So Brian Moore has five quick points. And Assumption has a five-point lead. And we're going to get a foul. On Brad Mancini. Get a second look at uh, Brian Moore's three. 
Carney on the break finds Moore wide open. Bryan gets a wide open look and is able to find nothing but net. Hounds on a 10-2 run. Again, Stonehill trying to play the uh, NBA high uh, uh, pick and roll play. It hasn't been effective so far. Finksler with the basketball. Abdallah outside. That's where Assumption would like to see him play. Donnelly, great up fake. Drives the lane, can't get the roll. Gets his own rebound, now Laverne gets it. And he is fouled. Donnelly and Laferme, nice job. The uh, two six 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 seven uh, Stonehill Chieftains going, pursuing the ball on the offensive board. Here we have Donnelly on the nice up fake, is able to put the ball on the floor very well for a six seven guy. Gets a nice opportunity, isn't able to bury it. He and Laferme go strong to the offensive board. Laferme in the ensuing action draws the foul. And Loverm knocks down his first of and two free throw attempts. Not wanting to be repetitious, but this is certainly a rarity for Assumption, particularly at home, not to be able to get to the foul line. And Stonehill spending all night there and effective there. Stonehill enjoying a six rebound advantage as Laverne knocks them both down. Ryan Moore checking out of the game. You see him with Chris Kassane and Adam Petkus on the bench. Drew Cooper back in the ball game for the Hounds. Stonehill turning up the pressure on defense, trapping. Cooper able to break it. Has to pull it up. Three-point assumption lead. Brad Mancini looking inside for Cooper, and there's a foul. And it will go on J Justin Loverm. Stonehill changes defense a little bit here. They wind up going a little bit of man-to-man -man instead of zone. We have Loverm over the top of uh, Drew Cooper. Assumption ball out of bounds under the basket. Cooper and Donnelly chatting after that play, the out-of-bounds play. Out-of-bounds play underneath. Assumption usually executes this extremely well. Here's Cooper in the lane, and he is going to be fouled by Baia. Baia with the uh, reach-in foul. Got a little bit of wrist. That will be the third personal on Mark Baia. Cooper again down low, working on Abdallah. Gets it to Calver. Calver won't go. Battle for the rebound taken by Donnelly. Donnelly gets it to Baia. Chieftains push. And Franzen. Knocking down the baseline jumper. And it is a one-point assumption lead. Stonehill back into its zone defense now. Matt Broshu travels with the basketball. Little stutter step, Matt, uh, versus his zone. And now Andy Nidzwicki will come in replacing Broshu. Stonehill has 13 turnovers in the ballgame. Assumption has 11. Laverne, turn around in the lane, won't go. Calver tips the rebound up and is run down by Mancini. Mancini pushes it up and waits for the help to arrive. Assumption swinging the perimeter. Only Calver is inside. Cooper off the up fake, won't go. Rebound by Abdallah. Baia looking to go inside to Donnelly gets it to Laverne now to Donnelly in and out Laverne nice high low post play to uh, Donnelly Donnelly uh, blew the wide open layup it's been a lid on the hoop down low for David Donnelly Brent Calver front rim Drew Cooper keeps finding Calver Calver can't find net one point assumption lead 53 52 744 remaining in the game Stonehill Actually, looking to snap again it's one of those loses. games Kevin where the crowd just isn't into it but the play hasn't drawn him into it either really hasn't been a flow to the game as we mentioned very sloppy on both parts with missed shots and turnovers Abdallah 
Nails the jumper, and Stonehill has the lead. This kind of atmosphere is not conducive to a home team win. Stonehill kind of lulling assumption along as the game plods along at a slow pace, and all the while, the Chieftains hang around and hang around, and now they enjoy a one-point lead. Donnelly's on the court, but he's taking a little bit of a break here. Donnelly has three times been the NE10 Player of the Week. What we mentioned, weakened by the illness that caused him to lose 20 pounds in 10 days. Assumption over the top foul, Casey Carney. Assumption foul, 34, Casey Carney. That'll be Carney's third. third personal team foul number eight. And now Brant Calver will check out. Brian Moore checks in, and Chris Cassane will check in for Brad Mancini. Franzen at the foul line. And Franzen knocks down. That's the, the second time tonight down. he's had that kind of a role. He must have some kind of special spin on it from Sweden. It's working for him. And he knocks them both down. So Olaf Franzen gives Stonehill a three-point advantage with 6.42 remaining in the contest. We'll be back with more right after this. When I'm on the basketball court, I've got a game plan. And when I was pregnant, my game plan was simple. Get prenatal care, adopt a healthy lifestyle, and take a daily multivitamin. That's what the March of Dimes recommends to women who want to have a healthy baby. For 60 years, they've been saving babies' lives. The March of Dimes is a part of our life. Make it a part of yours. At the conclusion of today's game, Joe and I will select the flagship bank player of the game. Flagship Bank will make a donation of $100 in that player's name to the Assumption College General Scholarship Fund. Here is uh, Malam Abdallah in the lane, helping Stonehill on their 8-0 run, which they presently enjoy. Faya makes a little bit of penetrating uh, dribble and a nice pass to uh, Abdul. Abdullah again, buries the 15-footer. Stonehill has put Assumption a little bit to sleep. The crowd's asleep. Stonehill leads by three. Six minutes to go in the ball game. Stonehill lost four players from last year's team, two to graduation and two transferred, including Sean Fine, who took his game to Georgia Tech. Sean Fine, the outstanding player in the uh, league last year, as you mentioned, made the transfer to Bobby Crimmins team. Assumption now with the quick passes. Moore down low, using the body, gets space, can't get the roll. Drew Cooper does get it. Now there's some contact. Nice job, uh, ball handle uh, assumption there. Brian Moore gets it up on the iron. Drew Cooper's able to pursue it and get the deuce. Brings the Greyhounds within one. And I think that's what assumption needed, and particularly Moore needed that. Get the physical play back, and he got knocked down at the end of the play, and it's kind of one of those wake-up calls always Football and hockey players like the first hit. They just wait till that once they get the first hit, then they're in the game and ready to play. And I think Moore just got that. He takes another hit from Jermaine Mitchell. Moore encouraged Mitchell. Mitchell went along with it. But I think that may be just what the doctor ordered for assumption to pick the intensity level up over the final 5.53. That and someone to make an over-the-top jumper. It doesn't have to be three-point land, but it has to be something over the top to stretch his own a little bit. Nidzwicki with the basketball. Hounds trail by one. Carney, Nidzwicki, and Cooper are playing out beyond the arc. Kassane in the corner. Carney for three. Gets it. It's the one that Coach DeBarry was looking for. Nice swing of the ball by the Hounds. Nidzwicki finds Carney. Carney finds Nett for three. And credit Casey Carney, he has not had a good night shooting, but he has continued to throw it up there, and that is his second three of the ball game. And now Chris Kassane 
reaches in as he tried to go for the steal, and he will pick up his third personal foul. Casey Carney, we mentioned, not really shooting that well, but he continues Casey to Casey Carney, that's uh, the look that the Greyhounds want for him, and that's exactly what they want him to do. Nice look, perfect form, good follow through. Malam Abdallah hits his first free throw attempt, a 70% free throw shooter. Alam Abdallah, as we mentioned, outstanding performance coming in off the bench for Stonehill. 12 points in the game for Abdallah. Stonehill trails by one. See if the lid is off the rim for the Greyhounds now from outside. Carney is feeling it. Casey Carney with his second straight three. Good shooters going streaks. And that helps to get the crowd coming to life and get them into the game a little bit more too as both teams are in the bonus. And Kassane was looking to draw the charge on Finksler. Finksler does a nice, nice job here again with the ball. He's a little bit tricky off the uh, dribble and he's quick. His first step, he goes right by his wiki. Kassane makes the uh, good offside help, comes into the blue, but is gonna get caught on the move. The wide open uh, three for Casey Carney. Burries two in a row. Gives the Hounds the lead. Finksler misses the first free throw attempt. A 68% free throw shooter. Interesting to see whether or not Stonehill stays zoned now that Casey has hit two in a row here. And Finksler nails one of two. So Assumption leads by three. We have had 11 lead changes and six Stonehill ties. Stonehill comes out man to man now. Now Assumption's gonna try to go inside to Brian Moore if they can. Kassane goes inside to Moore and gets it back, but we're gonna have a foul before as Moore was fouled. And that one may go on Laverne, who is helping out Abdallah. Stonehill made the defensive adjustment, went man to man as a result of Casey Carney hitting the two over the top. An assumption, nice uh, possession that time. They came down, they realized it was man to man. Kassane makes the uh, uh, inlet pass to Brian Moore, and Brian Moore draws the foul. Moore will be shooting one and one, a 71% free throw shooter. Brian averaging 19 points a game to go along with 10 rebounds. He has 11 points in the contest tonight. Meteorologists call this time of year the January thaw. It's sort of a low for teams, too, and I'm not putting it on Stonehill on assumption. If you go throughout the uh, country at this time of year, any level, Division One, Two, or Three, they sort of have that low, and now teams that want to uh, do something in the uh, tournament picture have to light the fire at this time of year. Adam Pett gets back in the ball game. He tries to go for the steal on Abdallah. Finksler off the drive. Won't go, rebound by Donnelly. Donnelly kept it high in the air. It goes up quickly for two. Three-point assumption lead. Stonehill back in the uh, zone again. Assumption will have to uh, look for the swing of the ball, see if they get Casey Carney again. Front rims this three-pointer. Carney looking to hit three in a row. Assumption man to man. Finksler will probably try to take Nizwicki one-on-one from the top. Abdallah now on Cooper. Finksler, Nizwicki getting help from Moore down low. Abdallah on the turnaround gets it to go. Nice execution by Stonehill. Finksler, Donnelly gave up the ball, found Abdallah. Abdallah the freshman having an outstanding ball game here. And now it is a one point assumption lead. 326 remaining. Cooper and Moore almost shoulder to shoulder in the paint for a while. Now Brian Moore goes up strong and draws the foul on Abdallah. It will be his fourth. And again, Stonehill went uh, man to man. Assumption uh, kept their head, if you will, and offense there. Wound up moving the ball around. Here's the uh, last Stonehill basket. Donnelly into Abdallah. Abdallah takes Cooper one on one. Nice turnaround jumper off the glass. Assumption came back, was very patient, got the ball inside to Brian Moore. Brian drew the foul. And Moore gets the hometown roll in the first free throw attempt. Assumption leads by two. And 
Bryan gets one of two. And we're going to get a foul on Petkus. So now Abdallah will be at the line, and that will be Adam Petkus' fourth personal foul. Adam came all the way across the lane to draw that offensive foul. Good call by the official. So Abdallah at the line, a 70% free throw shooter. Abdallah, Lafern, and Donnelly are a nice front court for this Stone Hill uh, team. Abdallah can tie the game if he knocks both down, and he has the first one. Now Chris Kassain coming into the ball game for Petkus. And Fingsler will check out, and Baja will check in. And so both free throws are in the books, and with 320 remaining, we are all tied up at 64. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Lionel Lamro. It's hard to believe that we have been in business for a little over 20 years. During those years, Lamro Ford has built the reputation of providing our customers a different car shopping experience. No pressure and no gimmicks. From our showroom to our parts department to our award-winning service department, we believe in complete customer satisfaction. Our only goal is to satisfy the customer. For a totally different car shopping experience, take advantage of our experience. Lamro Ford, Route 9, East Brookfield, where friends send their friends. Can we see the ball game for a dollar? Go away, kids, you bother me. Can we see the concert for a dollar? Can we see the animals for a dollar? <laughs> Can we please see a movie for a dollar? You kids just don't get it, do you? Now you can get it all. Sports, music, animals, movies, news, and more. All for about a dollar a day. Greater media, your television will never be the same. Looking at the NE10 standings, you see Assumption at 5 and 5 in the middle of the pack, and Stonehill at 4 and 6, just a notch below. St. Michael's at the top, and uh, Lemoyne, most coaches feel, may be the team that you have to contend with, even though they're 7 and 3 and in the second position in the standings. And Cooper picking up the pass. Nidzwicki tried to thread the needle. A few people got hands on it. Coop finally picked it up, and he is fouled. Hope, hope we have a replay of that one. That's a three-way assist when as Wiki hit two Stonehill uh, players with the pass before the ball was pursued eventually by Cooper. Cooper to the foul line for two. Drew Cooper can't get the first one, and here's the look at that play, the end of it. Touches two uh, Stonehill players. Cooper has the opportunity for the deuce, draws the uh, foul on Baya. Cooper missed the first of two. Chance to give the Hounds a lead here with 3.06. Drew Cooper, second free throw attempt. And it is good. Sumption in a fallback man-to-man. Uh, -man. Now they're going to have to contend with uh, Donnelly and uh, Finkson. First half, Assumption shot 63% from the floor. Second half, they're shooting 33%. Laverne shot won't go. Run down by Baya. And Fingsler can't get the three to go. Couldn't get a better look than he had there. And Casey Carney. They were calling for a timeout, but did Carney have possession? Carney went to the floor for the ball and did not have possession when they called for the timeout. So it will be a tie-up and Stonehill basketball. It might have called a travel. I'm not sure. Man-to-man -man defense uh, assumption. Important two and a half minutes ago. Donnelly looking for the ball down low. He had Nitzwicki on him. It's a mismatch. Adam Petkus knocks the ball back to midcourt. And still, now Brian Moore switches with Nitzwicki. Fingsler off the drive. Charging call. Terrific job. Carney holds his back, and Brian Moore holds the base of his head. Carney did the nice job. Finksler very tricky with the ball, as we mentioned before. Puts it through the legs. Makes a penetrating move here now. Brian Moore just in time. Draws the foul. Important possession for the Hounds here now. The 15th turnover the ball game for Stonehill. Stonehill uh, in his own. Assumption can be a little bit patient here. And we are down to the nitty gritty. Two minutes remaining. One point assumption advantage. 
Good Dong look, good shot, even though Brian Moore wasn't able to make it. And Donley comes down with a clutch rebound. Finksler. Laverne. Donley, Baia, and Abdallah out there for Stonehill. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Laverne now guarded by Kassane. Assumption staying the man-to-man -man defense. Shot clock down to three. Donley has to launch. It is an air ball. Terrific job by the Assumption defense. Great job defense, uh, Greyhounds there. Brian Moore particularly did a nice job in that particular possession. Very big possession defensively as Assumption holds serve. They lead by one. 114 remaining in the game. Greyhounds need a score here. And this is a tribute to Chris Kassane, the walk-on sophomore, that he is still in the game. And Casey Carney nails the three. And now the crowd comes to life along with the Assumption bench. Casey Carney uh, buries the uh, third three-pointer the last five minutes. Gives the Greyhounds a four-point lead here. Carney has certainly come through when the Hounds needed it. He has, you mentioned, the three three-pointers down the stretch here. And none bigger than this one. And again, nice movement of the ball. Landing his wiki finds Carney in his favorite spot there, buried in the left-hand corner. Casey feels he's on a roll, doesn't hesitate. Nice look, perfect form, good follow-through. Three three-pointers. Assumption, four-point lead. And the Hounds gaining some separation with that three. They now lead by four. So it will take two possessions for Stonehill. Chieftains with the rebounding advantage, 38 to 29. Finksler and uh, Donnelly are the two key guys now that the Greyhounds have to contain. Adam Petkus is back in the ball game for Assumption. Shot won't go. Donnelly with another big rebound. Turn around and he does get it to go. And we're going to get a timeout. Finksler misses the three. Donnelly makes the good offensive rebound. Nice bounce. Good turnaround. Makes a 10 footer. Brings Stonehill within two. And it didn't take a lot of time off the clock. There's still 47 seconds remaining. It's at least a uh, two possession uh, game here. Stonehill can uh, play its zone if it wants. Finksler gets a great look there. Wasn't able to make it, but uh, Donnelly pursues the ball real strong. One bounce, nice 10 foot turnaround. And he does have that shooter's touch. It'll be interesting to see whether or not uh, Stonehill decides to play zone and take the chance on Casey Carney hitting another three, or if they go man to man and try to contain Brian Moore inside. Heads up player two, Donnelly, right when he made the hoop. You saw him signaling for the timeout. That's the veteran. He is a senior. It's a senior. He's been around. Been through several of these uh, situations before. And if you're Coach DeSantis right now, do you? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I think he's got to make a decision here. He can decide to try zone because they're going to get the ball back regardless. If he goes zone, he's taking the uh, chance that uh, Carney might get another look at an open three. My bet is that he'll come with some kind of man-to-man, probably pressure defense, see if he can uh, get a turnover, make the Greyhounds play their man-to-man -man offense. Donnelly averaging 23 points a game. Here they he are, full court zone tonight. press, effective. Underneath, an easy hoop for McDonald. McDonald gets his first two points of the contest, but they are the biggest two for his team. He's tied the game up with 33 seconds remaining in the contest. There is a difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Brian Moore backing his way in, gets the hoop, and now Assumption will call for a timeout. Brian Moore may have got away with one there. Baia looked as if uh, he had possession. Brian thinks that uh, he might have got hit uh, on the arm. It may be that the uh, ref said no harm, no foul either way there. So Assumption leads by two. Brian Moore came up with it, but we're going to take a second look at the Chieftain Steel and James McDonald. Here's getting the, his first uh, two Chieftains of the game. coming full court uh, zone press. Here comes the double team. Careless pass. Nice steal. And the four purple jerseys you see in the paint there, too. They did the nice job with the uh, zone press. It surprised the Hounds. The Hounds a little bit careless on their ball handling there. And you know exactly that is what Serge is talking about right now. Be if sure they it's going to come this, again, right? Do. And I think we get a second look now at Brian Moore. You can kind of play ref at home. 
As Wicky gets the ball into Moore, Moore has Baia. Baia is moving. No, that was a good call by the official. No call. Right call. Ryan makes the uh, deuce. Assumption has the lead and has to play defense for 25 seconds. So it will come down to this. 25 seconds, 70, 68. And just have to make sure if you're going to help that you don't help off Finksler. I mean, you can help on the inside guys, but you want the inside guys to beat you one on one for a deuce. You don't want Finksler to get an open man three. There's Katie Kerr, who recently eclipsed the 1,000 point plateau herself, junior co captain of the Assumption women's team. She's been in a few of these barn burners and knew what to do in the last 25 seconds. She's had a great career at Assumption. Certainly has. So here we go, 23 seconds and counting. Hounds by two. A field goal ties it, a three puts the Chieftains in front. Assumption in a man-to-man. -man. Laverne on the baseline, won't go. Dawnley with the rebound, won't go. And the rebound by Nidzwicki and he calls for a timeout as he was falling out of bounds with six seconds left. Cooper did a nice job of uh, keeping that uh, rebound alive and his wiki come up with the ball. Hounds have to be careful here now with six seconds. You can be sure that uh, Stone Hill's gonna come with a full court zone press here. David Donnelly certainly has a nose for the rebounds. We're gonna step aside right now with six seconds remaining and be back with more right after this. What does being a responsible dad mean to me? It's really just being there for my child. At age two, Sydney just likes being with her dad. Feathers on my back, I'm a duck. Quack, quack. <laughs> we are definitely a team. I just love being around her. Don't miss out on what could be the best years of your child's life. Be a responsible dad. Whether married, divorced, or single, dads make a difference. A message from the New England Child Support Enforcement Agency. Here we take a look at the last possession for Stonehill. Have Lafirm with the ball, gets a good opportunity along the baseline. Isn't able to uh, do anything but hit a little bit of iron. Donnelly, good nose for the ball, but throws uh, a little bit of air ball. Cooper keeps it alive, and Nidzwicki comes down with the rebound. Andy Nidzwicki, five foot nine, but he averages four rebounds a game. Important inbounds pass here by Nidzwicki. Six seconds remaining. Nidzwicki's got to get the ball in. He does so to Moore. Moore is fouled, but not before two seconds go off the clock. So there are four seconds remaining right now, and Brian Moore will be at the line. Brian Moore is the guy that wants to be at the line at this particular time. Now he just has to make sure he rises to the occasion, stays within his routine, and gets two. Assumption can't fall asleep on a miss here. They still have to play some defense. Brian Moore with two shots. And he knocks down the first one. A 71% free throw shooter. Coach DeBarry will come with a substitute here in order to stop the clock and to bring in a uh, defender should Brian Moore make this foul shot. Moore has 17 points in the game right now. Stonehill sending some players deep down the court right now. Malam Abdallah is going to be checked by Cooper way down the other end. Adam Petkus looking to check in. He will have to wait. And Moore hits them both. So Brian Moore has 18 points. Moore did what he had to uh, do. The substitution uh, stops the clock, gives Assumption chance to set up its defense. Stonehill's in real trouble now. Abdallah, buy it for three, won't go, and that will do it. 